Hello everyone, it's Wisdom Wednesday time and it's also the week before Christmas and Hanukkah is going on. So Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to everyone. I had fully intended to have a video last week but got caught up in the birth of my granddaughter, our very first grandchild. So that was just so exciting. And uh, Miss Amelia Quinn is here and doing well and a week old today. And so just didn't get anything done last week and probably will take off next week as well uh, with the holiday season going on. But before we get really further into the week and into the holidays and everybody traveling, I know we did a little bit of, of work several weeks ago and, and discussion about how to stay healthy during sugar season. But boy, we are seeing an awful lot of flu and an awful lot of strep throat and of course, another resurgence of COVID. And folks are just not feeling well and having a hard time getting over everything. So I thought I would go through once again, just ways to optimize our health and create health in the midst of all the, the travel and the celebrations and what we can do without necessarily having to go to pharmaceuticals. Because generally speaking, unless it truly is a bacterial infection, we can try to, to really optimize the immune system so that we can really work the battle within ourselves and let our body do our healing. And of course, the main thing is we just need to stop and rest, hydrate, and do all we can to create good health within the microbiome, within our gut, because an awful lot of this is taking place and starting in the gut. When we're inflamed there, we just are a setup for more inflammation and more infection. We know that when we're eating and drinking and not sleeping well, that we also are very susceptible. So I would just encourage you to really think about all these pillars of health, our diet, our exercise, our sleep, our stress management, and of course, trying to optimize our hormones, which many of us are on programs already, but even just eliminating stress can help optimize quite a bit in our lives of just balancing hormones in and of themselves without necessarily doing much more from an outside standpoint. So keeping good gut health, what does that mean? Well, it means you need a lot of good fiber. One of the things that you can do prior to going to any parties or any large meals is just a glass of water with some Miralax or some type of Metamucil, any psyllium fiber, try to do that prior to that. The other thing that's really helpful is collagen and you can do collagen in the form of powders, but you could also make bone broth. So bone broth is very simple to do. It's just in a pot, put bones and whether they're beef bones or chicken bones or even fish bones and add water and then add some form of acid, whether it's apple cider vinegar or lemon juice, and that pulls out a lot of the collagen amino acids from the bones. And then sip on a little bit of that two or three times a day. Just warm it up and sip on that, and that can be really helpful for keeping our gut in good shape. And then should you start to feel scratchy throat, a little irritation, a little bit of some drainage, then you might want to really hit hard vitamin C. And we know that if you take a lot of vitamin C all at once, it can cause loose bowels. So one thing that's easy to do, take 500 to 1000 milligrams every two or three hours throughout the day so that cumulatively you can add up to about 5,000 5, milligrams or five grams of vitamin C. So that one way to get started and get that vitamin C going, which is a great antioxidant. Vitamin D, you can really push that dose a little higher for the next four to seven days. Take 10,000. If you're not taking 10,000 already, you can do that. If you are taking 10,000, maybe add an extra 5,000 just for the week and do that on a daily basis. The zinc, you can take 20 milligrams to 50 milligrams daily. I have seen some recommendations of 50 milligrams twice a day and then take an ionophore, something that pushes that zinc inside the cells and 
Quercetin is a really good one and that's 500 to 600 milligrams twice a day. So zinc and quercetin also very good to diminish any type of viral replication. We know that even with some early bacterial things, things like olive leaf extract, oregano oil can be very beneficial as an antimicrobial. And even though some of those don't taste all that great, you can put some of those oils in capsules or you can actually just purchase capsules that are already made with these types of herbs and substances in them. So that's a really helpful thing to do, especially if you don't have ac immediate access to a, an urgent care or a place where you can, can be seen. And it's a little more challenging over the holidays. I know we're expecting to have some interesting weather here and cold, cold weather. It may inhibit some of the travel uh, that you all may be trying to accomplish throughout this time frame. And so, and certainly with the cold, just make sure you bundle up and, and protect yourself. It's important to wash your hands an, an awful lot during this season. I prefer hand washing versus using a lot of the chemical products. So that's something that you, we can easily do. And if you are sick, really, I think the lessons we've learned from the recent pandemic is just stay home and take care of yourself and get well. I'm getting an awful lot of calls about how often to test if you test positive for the SARS-CoV-2 virus. And so really and truthfully, if you don't have fever and you've tested positive and you've gone at least five days without really any major symptoms or fever, you really don't need to continue to test. And if you're concerned at all, you can certainly continue to wear a mask, but you should be able to, to resume fairly normal activities and get back into society and um, re-enter your workforce or wherever you need to be or travel, whatever you need to do. And if there's any questions, just wear a mask. But I think a lot, a lot of folks are concerned about having to have a negative test. And it's possible that you could test positive for quite some time. And that just may be viral particles and not necessarily mean that you are infectious. So if you have any questions, go to the CDC website and look at their guidelines. And that's what we are following at this time. So I want you all to have a wonderful holiday season, wonderful week and celebration, but also good rest and continue to maintain good health and try to just hold things from being too out of balance. And if you have a, a big meal or a big night, just catch up, get good rest, stay hydrated and stay well. We'll talk again next week. Have a great holiday season.